a video review of the Sheila Stay Guang Huaman Hotel in Seoul, South Korea. I'm Chris, this is Topher, this is Yellow Productions. We do travel guides that are fun, informative, and entertaining. And in this video, we're gonna be reviewing this hotel. We're gonna be reviewing the common areas of the hotel. We'll show you the neighborhood around the hotel and the inside of one of the rooms. This room, a standard room with two single beds. The Sheila Stay Guang Huaman Hotel is a 19-story building located centrally in the Guang Huaman neighborhood of Seoul. The hotel is located conveniently just two blocks away from the Guang Huaman subway station entrance and just three blocks away over here from the United States Embassy, that really ugly looking building. And then their National Palace, which is a pretty looking building, is just on the other side of it that you can't see because it's blocked right now by the ugly American Embassy. On the ground floor of the hotel, you'll find a Starbucks coffee that oddly enough doesn't open until seven in the morning. So if you want your coffee fix early, well, it's not gonna be from here. In the building across the street, you'll find a 7-Eleven and there's a Burger King just on the other side. The Shilla Stay has a design that's popular in a lot of new Asian hotels, and that is when you walk in on the ground floor of the hotel, you don't really walk into the hotel. You just walk into this really empty lobby that's kind of like a catacomb, and they got a little sign here in the corner that says if you want to find the actual lobby and cafe, that's located up on the eighth floor. So there's elevators around the corner. There's a bank of three of them that tell you you're here on the first floor with the entrance, the lobby's on the eighth floor, and the guest rooms are on nine and 19. So it is nice that you don't have to transfer to a second elevator to get to the guest rooms, but the lobby is right there on eight. As you get off the elevator onto the eighth floor to your right, there's sort of a big conference table looking thing where people often were camping out doing some work. Just in the back there, you see the check-in desks and just beyond the wall, there's a little seating area. Not too many seats, but they were comfy. And just outside the lobby, there's even a small outdoor garden area where you can see kind of neat views of the city down below. The eighth floor is also home to the hotel's small gym that is nice because it had windows and the hotel's restaurant that's quite big. I'll talk more about the restaurant in the final review section of the video. This is room 1004. Come on in, let me show you around. It's kind of a cozy room, so you'll see a lot of our stuff spread out around it because there's not much room, frankly, to put our stuff and move around. So as you come in, there's a little hallway, and you come in, and it's two single beds in this room. They are small beds. Uh, there's a little nightstand made in a wood block with a clock back here. Uh, there is um, a very long desk table that's here. Uh, looking out the window, we see mostly office buildings on this fairly rainy day today. If we come over this way, we can see there's one flat panel television here on the wall. Notice there's not a lot of walk space and not a lot of place to put your stuff. I'm going to show you what's around this corner. This is like the in-room mini bar of sorts. Uh, there's a fridge under this kind of orange thing for just little items, one bottle of water in it. What's down in this drawer? That's the in-room safe. And up here, this is interesting, the coffee pot has some Brazilian specialty coffee. The closet in the room is Back here, there's this sliding door that's the door to the bathroom and the door to the closet, so it just closes one or the other. It's got a robe, uh, it's got um, some slippers and a drawer. Interesting with a extension cord. You don't usually see sort of power strip extension cords in a hotel, so I wonder, maybe there's not a lot of plugs in this room. Okay, let's go in the bathroom, which this closet door again, now it closes the closet but it opens the bathroom. So let's come in the bathroom. For a small room, this is a pretty good size bathroom. Um, sink, Avita, soaps, hair dryer. Um, the bathtub is like this, it's just got kind of this glass wall right here. Handheld bathtub, pretty big soaking tub. Uh, and the toilet seat, let's check this out, come over here. It's one of these fancy toilets that you can flush from here, have the bidet massage. It's even got a button called Rhythm. I haven't quite figured what that out is, but uh, it's not a Toto, but the Korean equivalent. Okay, Topher, do you know what time it is? It's Topher review time. It's time to review the hotel. And for those of you who watch our hotel reviews regularly, you'll know we rate things on a scale of one to five Tophers. And so Topher, how many Tophers is this hotel going to get? Three 
Tofers. Three Tofers. So first we'll talk about the pros and then we'll talk about the cons of why this hotel got three Tofers. So first we'll start with the pros and I also want to mention price as I talk about the pros because one of the pros is the price is reasonably inexpensive for this hotel. The price is approximately $110 a night for this room. That's without breakfast. If you want to get breakfast, then it's about $130 a night. That's the time we stayed in May. The prices could change, but compared to some of the bigger chains in Seoul, like Marriott's and Weston's, this is going to be about half the price of what you'd pay for the big name hotels. Of course, the room is about half the size, but we'll get that in the cons. The other pros, it's a pretty good central location in Seoul, right behind the U.S. Embassy, right next to their National Palace, just a short five to ten minute walk to Insadong, uh, so there's a lot of stuff around here. Uh, other pros, the hotel's fairly new, so it was clean. Uh, the breakfast, pretty good breakfast buffet. I mean, it's not amazing, but it was good, consistent. The food was fresh, warm, tasty. We really enjoyed the aloe juice on the buffet. So if you're here, check that out. Also this fresh steamed dim sum on the buffet. And yes, they had kimchi and pretty much every day what we had were the waffles with the whipped cream. Those were good as well. So make sure to check those out on the buffet. Another pro, the room was pretty quiet, assuming you don't open the window. We'll get to that in a little bit. Uh, the plugs are pretty good because you could plug in US plugs into the outlets. That was nice. And even though the room is small, the bathroom is a pretty good size. And what's interesting, this thing that's here, uh, when you saw the bathroom walk through, I think there used to be a glass window into the room from the bathroom. And so I'm actually kind of glad they covered that up because that's sort of weird. They provide two bottles of water every day. And it was also interesting on the walk to the bathroom, there was a motion sensor light that would turn on. So I guess you don't trip over yourself as you're going to the bathroom at night. But of course, the most important thing is how is the sleeping? The beds were pretty comfortable. Uh, the sheets were nice. Pretty good beds overall. Not too hard as sometimes they are in Asia. So now on the cons, speaking of sleeping, our sleeping was sort of so-so depending upon the night. This last night it was pretty good because the air conditioning was working well. Our biggest complaint about this hotel is the air conditioning. They have this box on the wall over there, the air conditioning box. And uh, as far as I can tell, really all it does is control the fan speed and show you the current temperature in the room. You can set the temperature and I set it down to 18 Celsius. When we got into the room our first night, it was 26, which is warm. And it cooled down maybe to 24 or 23, but never to 18. When I uh, complained to the front desk staff, they basically said, well, our um, heating and air conditioning is controlled centrally. And so depending upon the temperature, we set that centrally. If it's just unbearably too hot, we'll bring you a fan or you can open the window. So I guess there's a slight pro there that they're willing to bring a fan and that the window does open. But the problem with opening the window is then it's noisy and then it gets humid. Uh, so some nights the room was 25C. This last night it was 23C, not because we could control it, but that was just what the air that was coming into the room that made it sleepable. So if you don't mind a warm room, then maybe that's not a big issue for you. If you like it cold, like I like it cold, then it's kind of hard to sleep when it's that warm. Uh, other con, even though it's a good neighborhood, kind of the trendy touristy area is Myeongdong. That's about a 20, 25 minute walk away. Um, so while this is central, it's not like the middle of everything. So the room size, I mentioned this earlier, the room, it's really quite small. And they really tried to be economical to make it $100 a night. It's small. The desk is tiny. There's almost no place to open your luggage and walk around. Uh, it's... It's probably perfect for one person. With two people, it gets kind of cramped. Why two people? Well, there's no mirror in the main part of the room. I mean, there's kind of this lame black mirror that's in here, but there's no light on it. The only real mirror is in the bathroom. Um, and so with two people, you'll be spending a lot of time passing each other really close by. And then you add a third panda to the room and it's just, it's out of control. And the desk, yeah, I was here to do a lot of video editing and it was pretty cramped. It would be hard to actually use that desk as an office if you were here on a work trip. I saw a lot of people camped out in the lobby at the big table they had down there so they could put their laptop and kind of spread out because there wasn't, wasn't really any room to do that in the actual room. Uh, so with all that being said, would we stay here again? 
personally, last time we were here, we stayed at the Lotte Hotel uh, that was in Myeongdong next to the Lotte department store. I've got a video review of that. You can find the link in the description or up here. I liked that hotel better because it was the room was bigger, it was much more comfortable. I loved that that one was connected to the Lotte department store, but it was more than twice the price. Now me, I like nice hotels, so I would probably stay there over here, but if I was looking for a hotel that was in the $100 a night price range, then this is probably a pretty good option. Uh, so if you're coming to Seoul and you only want to spend about 100 bucks a night, definitely consider this hotel. If you are willing to pay a little bit more, well, you might enjoy checking out my review of that Lotte Hotel right here, or you might enjoy watching all of my other videos from Seoul. You can find a link here to my playlist or in the description below. We won't say goodbye because we'll see you in one of these videos.